Are you someone who compiles code just to see where exactly to fix something? Imagine writing code that has to be perfect. Every single mistake you make gets punished. And I mean every single mistake. To try this out, I set myself the challenge to build a Sudoku solver. But every time it fails, 20% of my code gets deleted. Here's how it works. Here I have written a small Python script which deletes 20% of the code at random. So here we just open the file and here we choose a percentage and we see here that 20% of the code gets deleted. And then during the compilation of my code, I have added an alias to build the code. So usually I would use a build system, but in this case I created an alias and I named the alias pain. <laughs> and here you can see uh, that it builds the code, then it runs the test case and if the test case or the building of the code doesn't work, here's the or, it will call this Python script. So whenever I call this alias now to build my code, either the test case compiles and runs or my code gets deleted. So I have here the Sudoku solver and this is now just a random file and you see here it's basically currently doing nothing, it gets a grid and nothing is inside just some comments to show you how it works and now i can call this pain function or the pain alias and here you see it tries to build the code and because there is some test case and this test case obviously isn't passing because i have uh, here a lot of uh, nothing here but you see uh, some of the comments are missing and even some of my code here is missing because it just did fail the test case itself is pretty straightforward we have a Sudoku which is unsolved, so here there are only a few numbers inside. And then we pass this one to our Sudoku solver, it solves it, and then we just compare whether the result, which I already know here, is exactly what the return value of the, re of the solver is. If yes, we pass the test, otherwise we fail the test. Let's shortly outline the idea of the code. The technique to solve these kind of problems is called backtracking. You can also say brute force. So backtracking tries a specific uh, version. So for instance, it will enter a specific number at the grid and then it tries to recursively add all of the other numbers until it either succeeds or it fails. If it succeeds, it will return uh, whatever did uh, solve the problem. If it doesn't succeed, it will try the other alternatives. This means we can separate the algorithm into four stages. The first one is finding the first non-zero place. The second one is iterating through all the nine numbers that could go into the space. The third one is checking if this number is violating any of the constraints. The fourth one is if yes, then we will recurse and if not, we try the next number. And that's basically everything. So let's give it a try and I hope you enjoy watching me fail. <laughs> Finding the first empty space is pretty straightforward. So we will just walk through the grid and uh, return wherever the row and the column is at the space where the first zero is appearing.
here we just assume that if there is an empty cell present that the sudoku uh, is not solved but if there is no empty cell present anymore then we successfully solve the sudoku and can um, get out of the recursion that we will implement and return a true value um, because we have already solved it successfully. In the next step we will iterate through all the possible nine numbers and try each one of them. that we want to check should be the board uh, that we have modified already. So we need to modify the grid before that and afterwards only do the checking. In Sudoku there are three rules. So each number is only allowed to be in every row, in every column and in every uh, three cross three square. So we need to check for all of these three different things. Um, and if any of these checks fail, then also the board is not valid. So let's implement every three of these checks. In case all of the checks pass, we know that we have found the number which is potentially the right one and then we will go deeper into the recursion. So we use an if here. If this is not the case, then we need to revert the grid because the number that we put here obviously was wrong and we need to remove the number again. The important part for any recursion is that it somehow needs to end. So here we have the whether it ends, so it ends if we have no empty cell left, but this also means that we need to somehow pass it through the recursion chain. So we also need to check if the solve actually was uh, correct. So we add here also an if statement. So we basically did already everything that we put here down in the comments, so let's delete them. And let's try to implement the checks. We need to check whether the number is unique in a row, in a column and in a square. Let's go with this row one first. The last one is a little bit more tricky. Here we need to go through the square. So we need to use the modulus operator to find the square and then move through the rows and columns of that square.
Okay, that's it. So here we now check for the, the square. Important it is that we check here just for the locals because we're already passing here uh, the row and the column and we need to modify them. Here we look for the start of the row and we look for the start of the column and then we just move uh, in this plus three fields and we check whether the number is already there and here nothing new, we just return false if we find it. Okay, so I guess I have written all the code that I need to write. And if I did everything correctly, it should pass the pet test case. If not, I lose 20% of my code. So let's go. And apparently I did a mistake. So let's try to fix everything. I guess it's time for the next try. Okay, I'm confident that it will at least compile this time. Let's see. Okay, at least it did compile, but apparently the test case failed. So let's have a look into that. But before, we need to rewrite everything.
Okay, checking through the code, here we do have an error. So the square row start is not row modulus 3, but is row subtracted by row modulus 3. And the same for the column. But since I cannot find any issues anymore, let's try again. And here we go, let's rewrite. Okay, let's carefully check everything again. Okay, I hope this one was the last bug here in the row or in the find first empty the problem was that i declare this variable inside the function itself i think i have done this all the time so uh, probably this was the root cause i hope i have fixed now everything um, let's give it another try and maybe we will still do this for a while okay it now takes at least some time to execute because we go really deep into the search tree, I would expect something like that, so I think it's a good sign. <laughs> and here we are! It seems like the Sudoku is solved and all the tests have passed. Ah, I'm actually relieved. So, um, I hope you had your fun today. I certainly didn't. <laughs> um, see you next time, and until then, as always, enjoy coding!